Dr. Carr, today you would discuss Marcus Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois. Many people have accused Dr. Du Bois of uh, betraying the black community when he had, uh, in his earlier years, criticized Garvey. And today you had actually gave what many people believe to be a new perspective of Du Bois. Are people incorrect or are people incorrect or correct when they say that uh, the boys had sold us out, so to speak? With his, with uh, I'll let you finish. Go no, ahead. no, that's good. No, no, I, I think I think it's a complicated question. I think Du Bois always thought he had the best interest of the black community uh, at heart. I think he was incorrect on the Garvey question, and I think with the uh, the advantage of years. He softened his position somewhat on Marcus Garvey. Um, he was critical of Garvey. He didn't think Garvey's financial uh, uh, economic plan was sound, and uh, he had some uh, real difficulty with the way that Garvey approached culture and the way that he approached organizing black folks. But he couldn't deny the energy that Garvey uh, Garveyism had spread. Um, certainly, Dr. Du Bois's interaction with the United States federal government and with business interests uh, like the interests of Firestone in Liberia you know raise some real deep criticism and I think legitimate criticism of Du Bois uh, as it relates to Garvey uh, but I don't think that Dr. Du Bois uh, thought that he would be harming the black community by uh, really not so much aligning himself with but certainly being counted among the kind of Garvey must go uh, crew uh, that existed in the 1920s. Uh, that haven't been said, however. I think that it's important that we understand that our leaders and our thinkers and our scholars uh, are human beings, which means they make mistakes. Uh, Garvey certainly was critical of Du Bois, critical of the NAACP. There was a lot of back and forth in the press at the time, the Negro World and the Crisis Magazine and the Messenger and the other news magazines at the time uh, that dealt with everything from colorism and and kind of charges of elitism and classism traded back and forth between Garvey and Du Bois. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's very interesting to note that Amy Ashwood Garvey becomes a major figure in the Fifth Pan-African Congress in Manchester. And this, of course, is the Congress that Dr. Du Bois helped organize as well. He was seen as kind of like a, the grand old man of the conference. And it was the conference attended by a number of people who went back to lead African liberation movements. And so Garveyism, in some ways, dovetailed with some of Du Bois's aspirations. And of course, Du Bois is buried in Ghana. Uh, he's buried in a country that exists under a flag with a black star in the center, which was the symbol of the Garvey movement, one of the symbols of the Garvey movement. So, it's, you know, the serendipities of history probably lead us to be both critical and celebratory of both men. We thank you for joining us, Dr. Carr. Thank you. It's a pleasure.